Hello and welcome to IDERA's Virtual Education. In this video we're going to provide you with an overview of the SQL Diagnostic Manager product. Now if you're a SQL Server Database Administrator or if you're just the acting database administrator we're going to show you in this product how it's going to help you from both a notification standpoint and a monitoring perspective as well as being a tool that you can use to um, do planning, do forecasting. So it's a well-rounded product. It's a very mature product. It's been around for 10 years. It doesn't require any services, agents, or procedures to be installed on the instances that are being monitored. And what's also nice about it is that it is very easy to install, very easy to maintain, and very little overhead uh, associated to the environment that you're managing with it. Uh, it also scales up to 300 instances per set of services, so it's very scalable from that standpoint as well. First screen we see when we go into the Diagnostic Manager product is the SQL DM Today view. And so if you do have a larger environment, what this is going to provide you with is a bird's eye or a single pane of glass, if you will, view of the environment that you're managing. And it's going to bubble up those things that are breaching any thresholds that have been tied to the metrics that you're monitoring against. As you see something and want to know more about it from this view, you can simply double click on that item and it's going to take you to the part of the tool that's going to give you the most information about that specific type of problem. Now, the tool can be used to view information from a real-time standpoint as well as from a historical standpoint. Other ways in which we can group the information, which would be, for instance, this type of view here, which is a grid-like view, uh, we would be able to look at and see, for instance, more of a thumbnail type of view. So depending on the number of servers that you have, you might be using one or more of these different types of views to, to, to see the servers. You'd also be able to group the servers by using the server tags of the views, and that's going to help you to perform administration in bulk against, for instance, all your production instances or maybe you want to run a report just against your dev boxes that's what the groupings will help you to do now when you find the server and you want to actually know more details around what's going on within that server um, I can go and use the server tree to click on that instance and that's going to take me into this dashboard view and so the dashboard is completely customizable I can choose which metrics are going to be put into this particular view and when you're on this screen you're gonna see there's a ribbon up at the top and that ribbon is divided by these different tabs that you see me hovering over and those tabs logically group the data about the instance both from a real-time as well as from a historical standpoint so if I'm looking at a real-time view, which is like what we see now, the console will constantly be updated with what's going on on that particular instance. If we want to, though, we can also go back and drill into a point in time in the past. So I could say, let's look and see what was going on, uh, let's say, on February 19th. I can select the date, select a polling interval, and now what I have is a picture of what I would have seen if I'd been looking at the real-time view at 4.55 p.m. on February the 19th. But what's really nice is all of these tabs here that you see are available and are consistent with that same point in time. So I can see what sessions were running. I can identify if those sessions were consuming CPU cycles. We can look and see if we had any locking or blocking. Uh, we could go out to see what queries were running given that period of time when we had a problem that were problematic in nature. We would be able to look at things like resources all the way from up to the CPU all the way down to the actual files themselves associated to I.O. The other thing that you can do is if you don't know when a problem happened is you can go into the alert section and in the alert section this is going to provide you a way to where you can go in and apply criteria to search for in this case we're going to look at the SQL Prado 1 instance we're going to look to see if blocking is taking place and we're going to go back and look at a month's period of time and when I apply that criteria we get a picture that's painted for us of everything from the very beginning of when a blocking incident occurred and we can follow it to its fruition when we see that it was lowered to an OK status and in between that period of time we can select any of the polling intervals and we can drill down into that polling interval and get even more details around that problem. So we can see all the sessions associated to the blocking. We can see what the lead blocking session was. Uh, once again, we can view the locks that are tied to that particular session. And we would also be able to go in and actually see the commands or the session details or the queries and things that were running inside of a command at the point in time when the collection was being made. Now, a lot of the information that we keep and put in our repository, we also leverage through the use of the reports. So on the reporting page, you'll see that the reports are divided uh, into three main areas, monitoring, analyze, and plan. And overall, these reports are going to provide you with some insight when you're doing things like capacity planning or if you're doing a consolidation. So all those types of questions can be answered here from within the reports. 
Uh, the really nice thing about Reports Piece is that the reports are immediately available upon installation of the console, but you can also deploy these reports out to SQL Server reporting services as well. Um, you can even create the subscriptions right from within the console of Diagnostic Manager. Now, if there's a report that you don't see on the list that you want to add, there's also a way in which you can go in and add new uh, custom reports. So as you go through and there's something that you need to incorporate as a new report, it's just a simple matter of choosing the metrics that you would want to have within that report. And this is also a good time to bring up the fact that the tool allows you to add custom counters. If there's something out of the box that we're not monitoring, if it's a Perfmon counter, a WMI counter, uh, a SQL Server counter, even a query that you want to incorporate into your polling intervals, or a ESX or, for instance, a vCenter counter, all of those can also be added into your polling intervals and add those custom metrics to your report. So it really makes the product quite extensible uh, and very flexible to whatever you're doing within your environment. Uh, in addition to the reporting piece we've talked about is to be proactive about the things that are going on in your environment so that as the DBA or the acting DBA, you're not the last person to know about a problem. And so the way in which we help you to achieve that within the Diagnostic Manager tool is if we go into the servers view, in one of the servers, let's go ahead and select and go into, in this case, uh, configure alerts. So what you're going to find is as soon as the product gets installed, it starts to go and collect its information, and then when it goes to work to try to help you to determine what is normal for each of the metrics that we're monitoring against. And so that's where we start to provide you with baseline information. So now the baselines can be customized to be calculated for whatever period of time you'd like them to be calculated against. And once you've determined your baseline windows for your instances, and they can be set independently for each instance, um, then that's going to give you a kind of guide to go by when you're setting your thresholds. The last thing you want to do is set a threshold that's something that's normal. So a good example of that would be if I set my warning threshold to 60 in this case. Once you've set up your thresholds, you can also then go out and create your alert profiles. And your alert profiles um, make the tool very powerful for you because it gives you the ability to create as many of these profiles as you need to. Each profile can have a different definition of scope. So one profile, which could be my on-call profile, may be only active between 11 p.m. and 5 a.m. Monday through Friday. It's only going to consist of monitoring the really critical metrics that I'm really interested in knowing about. Now you take the fact that this is just one profile, you can combine as many profiles as you want, and it really provides you, like I said, overall with a lot of power uh, from a proactive notification standpoint. Now you combine that with the fact that the notifications are one thing, but this part of the tool also will allow you to create actionable responses. The actionable responses can take the form of a script that's running against the server, a job, or an executable. And the nice thing about that, you get the option of adding parameters into the script itself so that what that means is, is that dynamically that script will be changing based on where the problem lies. So rather than getting an email from the tool saying, hey, you need to go fix this, you can actually have the tool say, hey, there was a problem, uh, it was addressed, we ran a script against it, and now you know about it. So in addition to the fat client console that you see here, you also have the option of using a web-based version of the console. So now we're looking at the web-based version of the console, and the first thing I'm going to do is log in. And so when I log in, it's going to give me access to the instances of SQL uh, that I have permissions to see. And keep in mind that the view that we're seeing here is obviously a little bit smaller, and that's by design. So this is really geared towards running on a smartphone, uh, like an Android, iPhone, obviously a Windows or a BlackBerry device. Um, if you're on call, you can drill into the instance, you can actually see what's going on, and not only can you see information, but you can also perform administration, assuming you have permissions to do so. So things like starting and stopping a job, killing a process, starting and stopping the SQL Server agent. Uh, I think the most powerful of the features is if I go to the actions area, uh, having the ability to run a query right from within the tool. Now you'll notice that these scripts I can save to my profile so I don't have to type them into my phone, which could be a chore, even though I do also have that op as an option. But I'd also be able to, from these templates of scripts that I create, uh, I can apply them to any instance, any database that I need to, and execute that query. So 
This has been uh, hopefully a pretty good overview for you as far as being able to understand what SQL Diagnostic Manager has to offer. Uh, if this is of interest to you, you want to try it out on your own, you can go out to our website at idera.com and download a free trial of the product.